Good morning, everyone. Thank you for connecting on uh, today's call. We will continue to learn about our spiritual authority. Let's pray first, and then uh, we get into the subject for today. I uh, would like to request one of us on the call to kindly lead in prayer, please. Any one of you, if you could uh, please unmute and uh, pray. Yeah, Jacqueline, thank you for joining us. Would you be able to lead us in prayer? Yeah. Thank you. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord God Almighty. Father, we commit this time into your hands, Lord. Father, even as we are few this morning, Father, we pray, Lord, that you will talk to us, Lord. And even as others here online, Father God, we pray, Lord, that you will talk to each of us through your word. Thank you, Lord, that you've been teaching us, Lord, and you've been equipping us, Lord, how to overcome the enemy, Father God, and live a victorious life. Help each of us, Lord, to follow this in our lives, in our everyday lives, Father God. In Jesus' mighty matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jacket. Uh, so we've seen so far about our spiritual authority, uh, the nature of Satan and his demons, their works, uh, but the victory of the cross and how we can overcome the enemy. We can have a lifestyle that is constantly overcoming the evil one. We talked about the use of many spiritual weapons, about positioning ourselves in a place where we are defended uh, from the attacks of the devil. So now we carry on from here and we learn some more uh, about how we can uh, exercise our authority and dominion. So in the lesson that follows, we are right now in chapter 11 in our notes, uh, we will look at uh, uh, exercising our authority in order to defend ourselves. So that is more from a protective, preventive sort of a position. We will also look at protecting ourselves in an offensive way or of going against the devil actively. So we exercise our authority to attack the enemy. So that's also something that uh, we will look at. And uh, then we will see how Prayer and intercession helps us release our authority. Words, we've been speaking about this earlier. Our declarations, our decrees uh, also help us release our spiritual authority. Righteous actions that we perform will also help us uh, express our authority against the devil. Uh, the power of agreement is another important thing. Then uh, leveraging angelic assistance in order to exercise uh, authority and dominion. And finally, the uh, working through authority gateways, how we can utilize this uh, for, for us to overcome the devil. This is what we are going to talk about. So we'll take it up one by one. So let's begin by exercising our authority in a protective and a preventive manner, which is defending uh, ourselves. So what are some things that one can do? So what we'll do is we will uh, look at a couple of phrases or words that show us how we can defend ourselves against the devil. So. In the word of God, there's always been a concept of protection, protective covering. So automatically, when there is a protection, what happens? The enemy cannot penetrate. And that's what we want as a defense mechanism for us. So uh, already we've talked about the, the overcomer's lifestyle. So all of those things apply. But more specifically, 
know, we uh, uh, talk here about uh, staying put where God has called us, positioned us, and uh, not letting the devil come in. Okay, uh, so how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, uh, when uh, Israel were leaving Egypt, what happened? There was that plague of, uh, you know, the, the firstborns uh, were dying and uh, God showed them about the power of the blood of the lamb. And so they protected themselves with the blood of the lamb. That's something that we can uh, do today. Uh, we could also protect ourselves through prayer. We know when we read about the life of Job, uh, he, uh, there is a statement in Job chapter 1 where the enemy says that uh, there is a defensive uh, a fence around him, a protective fence around him. And how did that happen? That happened through the life of devotion that Job had. You know, he had a life of worship. He was sincere and very consistent uh, with his uh, worship of God, his offering of sacrifices, his prayers. And so this form of a lifestyle helped him come under a protection. Uh, of God, so that's also something we can we can be awakened to that when we have this life of devotion and consistency uh, in in our you know uh, worship offerings all that uh, prayer, then we are protected in the spiritual realm. Uh, we also see that when we are walking with the Lord, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear. God and uh, you know it, it it surrounds us protects us so as I'm fear walking in reverence towards God uh, I will also have angelic protection so this is how I maintain my defenses uh, and uh, secret place uh, in Psalm 91 we know that he who dwells in the secret place of the most high so that position of intimacy is also a position where we are protected from the enemy but now we take our ground. We do all the uh, required, necessary things that a life of devotion, um, uh, you know, is is all about. Now, what are some additional words or phrases that we can look at? There are phrases such as words such as resist the devil, give no place to the devil, stand against the devil, withstand the devil. So all these words are not quoting the scriptures. It's all in our notes here, but they're taken from scriptures. But they are indicative of us defending our God-given territory you know, and counteracting any effort of the enemy to enter in. So as a believer, what should I do? I know that the enemy has come to steal, kill and destroy. He will make efforts towards that. So I use my God-given authority and I resist. I withstand or I stand against. You know, it, you can imagine you're protecting your house. Your, uh, if, if at all there is uh, an intrusion effort by somebody, uh, you're not allowing that to happen. So that's what this means. You are resisting, resisting the devil from inside and saying, hey, you know, you cannot come in. And uh, of course, the easy way for him to come in is when we give him place. So uh, Paul told the Ephesian church, don't give him any place, give no place to the devil. So when we do these things, we are actually protecting ourselves. We are defending ourselves. Now, uh, in the defense mode, we can also talk about a wrestle against the enemy. So in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 12, says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. Uh, we, we are wrestling against spiritual entities. Uh, so what is this wrestle? The word wrestle is a continued intense personal conflict against the devil. So it uh, is indicative of us engaging in a prolonged manner. It's not necessarily that, you know, we, we uh, uh, call the devil out and that's it. But continuously, we are fighting against the devil. 
it's like uh, till you overcome till you overpower till you subdue the enemy there's a wrestling match against the devil so that's what uh, our defense looks like we may have to uh, stay our ground and not give up you know it might take uh, some time uh, we don't know you know how how much time uh, it might be for each situation case by case but we are making our effort and the whole wrestle against the demonic powers is going on so uh, it's going to be intense it's going to be continuous but we cannot let go so as believers uh, we must also recognize in our minds that when i'm trying to defend myself i am contending against the enemy uh, i am opposing every demonic work against me uh, and you know the bible uses terminology such as fight the good fight of faith so it's not a one off we are in battle till we win we are in battle till the enemy gets tired and retreats so that's the way in which we defend our self so we said first is resist stand your ground second is wrestle we are also making a uh, an effort against the devil and uh, intensely engaging uh, to protect ourselves so wrestling is uh, a defense mechanism that a believer can use so i'm using my authority i'm using my dominion i'm contending against the devil i'm fighting the devil and uh, that's the way i overcome that how else do i defend uh, remember we said the shield of faith is a defensive weapon so when i use my faith that's also a defense mechanism uh, with my shield of faith what am i doing i'm quenching all fiery darts what are the fiery darts of the devil his lies his accusations um, you know his uh, condemnation uh, so his deception so he uses all of these things to play uh, uh, in the battlefield of our minds and when he can you know set a blaze or set on fire uh, some important part of of us and you know try to destroy it what helps us the shield of faith because the shield of faith will say no that's an accusation i reject it in the name of jesus no that's a temptation i reject it in the name of jesus no that's uh, a condemnation i reject it in the name of jesus no that is a lie i reject it in the name of jesus so that's how, what am i doing you know the fiery darts are coming but i am quenching the fiery darts you know i'm i'm putting it off so as a believer i'm using my authority to stop the fiery dot darts of the enemy so this is an encouragement for us to stay in faith be full of faith towards god so when we are full of faith it's so difficult for the enemy to penetrate he look at other means to try and uh, uh, enter it okay so uh, we can make it very difficult for satan to attack us make it very difficult for satan to try to defeat us so this is how we will defend ourselves is everyone doing okay uh, are you all following what i'm saying could respond on chat or if you feel comfortable unmute and share okay that's good that's good okay wonderful thank you so much thank you okay so uh, so far we've looked at defense now how to use our authority offensively against the devil or uh, in other words we are now talking more about advance forcefully we are uh, you know um, one up as as we would state uh, against the enemy so how do we advance against the enemy with our authority so there are some more action words that we can talk about these are words that even jesus used in his ministry against demonic powers and we are authorized to uh, exercise our authority uh, in these ways as well so the first one is rebuke command so there will be times like even in the ministry of jesus there were times when he uh, observed uh, the manifestation of uh, demonic uh, powers uh, demons uh, 
uh, taking over a, a, an individual. What did he do? He just rebuked. He just commanded that demon, I rebuke you. Uh, so because of the victory that we have through the cross, we are able to do this. Now we see even Paul followed along. The, uh, the apostles, the set of first believers, uh, they followed the patterns of Jesus, uh, his life, his ministry. So uh, nothing changed. We see even Paul in Acts chapter 16, when he comes across uh, a girl who is demon possessed, he rebukes, he commands, right? So uh, even in other places, authority has been demonstrated in this way so you and i today we will talk more about this we'll talk in detail about deliverance you know as a practice later how do i how do i do this uh, but for now uh, let us understand that there is a place for us to rebuke demons rebuke you know sometimes uh, we we may say oh i rebuke you devil but it's understood we are we are referring to demonic powers uh, as a whole so that's fine we can rebuke the devil we can issue a word of command in the name of our lord jesus and so when we do that we are going against the devil and he has to respond to it because uh, uh, you know authority is there i have authority but what if I just sit down and the devil is doing all his stealing, his killing, his destroying, and I just let it go? I'm not using my authority. But when I rebuke, when I command, I say, stop, devil, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Or any work of the devil, let's say uh, there was a fever. Peter's mother-in-law had fever. We read, Jesus rebuked the, the fever. He commanded it to go. So he took authority. This is how we take authority. When we sense in our spirit that God wants us to use this method, uh, we we just go with that. We say, okay, I rebuke. It could be a, a condition. Uh, it could be a sickness. It could be, uh, you know, a situation. But we rebuke it. Because it's, it's, what is the source? Demonic. And so that is the reason we are rebuking. We are commanding. Isn't it? Uh, or... Uh, uh like even if it is i think uh, a natural thing and not so much a demonic thing also i think using our authority in uh decreeing commanding uh, would work but primarily since we are talking in the context of deliverance you know all of what we are talking about is applied uh, we are talking about applying it uh, against demons and satan so rebuke command that's one way in which we can do this use our authority second way is cast out so there are umpteen examples of jesus casting out demons from people uh now even in mark chapter 16 verse 17 you know he he said that you will cast out demons and these signs shall follow those who believe we are the ones isn't it so if we believe then what are some of the signs that should follow us one with regard to deliverance they shall cast out demons in my name they shall cast out demons so we can evict or expel demonic spirits from their immediate habitation and generally it is the bodies of uh, uh, people and uh, they forcefully take over the the bodies of people but we can go against that and we can command them to come out okay, so casting out is another way that we would do now there are many questions around this people say when we cast out a demon uh, what else do we do like do we command the demon to go somewhere or uh, generally you know casting out a demon is should be good enough uh, and uh, we know jesus talked about the place where these demons would uh, go they are disembodied spirits so they are constantly looking for a body they don't like to be without a body so once they are cast out they again wander around uh, in the matthew chapter 12 we uh, read about it verse 43 goes through dry places seeking rest so they're doing this and when they are seeking rest it simply means they're looking for a habitation once again now they may try to come back to the original habitation uh, when i say original from the place that they were they were cast out and they their tendency is to come back 
powerfully so they may bring back with them many more demons to reoccupy but if the person is uh, born again filled with the spirit walking in the ways of the lord then reentry is uh, you know we are prohibiting reentry into that individual but here is uh, the other way of advancing we simply cast out if we uh, know that uh, satan and his demons are indwelling uh, a person or to any immediate habitation it could be an animal we've talked about it isn't it uh, or it could be a space we can cast out demons okay that's another way in which we can exercise our authority now we can also Uh, spiritually destroy the works of the devil now when we read about the lord jesus um, uh, and uh, what he did on the cross for us in hebrews 2:14 we read that jesus destroyed satan through his work of redemption on the cross again in 1 john chapter 3 verse 8 we see that jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. what is destroy you know we we um, you can understand that it is bringing certain works to ruin that's what destroy means that whatever existed no longer exists you know in its in its uh, uh, prime a uh, good condition anymore it's in ruins so that is what jesus has done to satan his works satan's works are now destroyed in other words we can understand this as the works of satan were made useless or they were made of no effect okay or they were made void uh, uh, or terminology such as uh, loosen the the works or break the works or dissolve melt put off all this can be used to understand destroy jesus is already destroyed so on the basis of what has been done on the cross of calvary remember we said this we said that we are not here to fight for victory because victory is already ours we are just here to enforce victory we are already overcomers we are here to enforce our victory so when we see a situation in which you know satan is uh, trying to steal again kill destroy do all his tactics we are authorized to enforce victory by destroying or make no make useless or make bring to no effect the works that he is uh, trying to raise up uh, and you know we have other passages in scripture like isaiah 1027 we saw that how the anointing will break the yoke it says break what similar to destroy even the work of the spirit the work of the holy spirit uh, when we invite the work of the holy spirit is capable of destroying the work of the devil so what do we do you know we can pray along these lines and uh, we could say something like uh, you know uh, satan uh, you jesus has already destroyed you on the cross of calvary uh, or uh, jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil he's already destroyed the works of the devil lord we thank you for the anointing which destroys which breaks every yoke right now uh, and and god like you, you can go ahead and speak this we can speak this so it's a combination of the work of the cross and the work of the spirit which is breaking the oppressive chains of the devil over people's lives so we use our authority we can we can declare what has already happened destruction has already happened uh, the devil's destruction we can already say that uh, uh uh the the spirit of god is at work right now he is undoing chains he is undoing bondages he is breaking bondages and as i speak this i am enforcing the victory of christ and satan is very scared of a believer who knows who is aware isn't it uh we are believers or god's people are destroyed for what for lack of knowledge but when we know who we are what has been won for us we have the victory the enemy now has to you know r- r- flee from us so we can advance by destroying the work of the devil now other uh, terms which we can see is a remove uh, and overcome so remove along the lines of destroyed 
uh, it talks about taking away burdens, taking away chains, taking away yokes of the oppressor from people's lives. Uh, and so when we pray, when we declare it, when we say because of the cross, uh, uh, every work or every bondage of the enemy is removed. I command it to be removed. What am I doing? I'm exercising my authority. Is there anything wrong that I'm doing? No, I'm not because it's already done with my words. I'm just trying to enforce it. I believe that Jesus has broken every chain. And so I'm asking for what I am noticing to be removed, be removed. From the lives of these people every oppression be removed in the name of jesus so that's how we go about it you know, we continue the way jesus ministered so remove is another way of advancing against the enemy now the other i said was overcome overcome is uh it's it's more like wrestling language uh where two people are fighting when uh, one person you know gets the other person down so he's on top of the other person and he's the winner that person is the overcomer. That person is the one who has prevailed. That person is the one who subdued. So in that manner, we, the Bible says that we are overcomers. And the church is a very strong and a powerful entity as far as uh, God is concerned because Jesus is the head of the church. Uh, Jesus uh, said in his word that I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. So who will prevail? We will prevail. We are the overcomers. Uh, and as believers, based on these scriptures, you know, we can consistently overcome. Okay, devil, you're trying to do this. I overcome you by the blood of the Lamb. I overcome you with the name of Jesus. I overcome you by the word of the Spirit. So in this way, we are constantly getting on top of whatever Satan is trying to do against us. Uh, and uh, that is how we advance against the devil uh, okay so let's continue what are the what are some more uh you know uh things that we can do to uh, advance so now we are coming into the category of uh, as jesus taught us isn't it he said uh, in matthew 16 i give you the keys of the kingdom whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven so so far we saw the complete uh, uh, destruction, overcoming, removal, uh, you know, or uh, also casting out, casting out, rebuking, commanding, you know, completely, we just, we just want this thing out, okay? But when we come to binding and losing, uh, the way we understand it is uh, maybe slightly different, slightly different. It's along the same lines, so... So especially when you say lose, uh, it's along the same lines. But when particularly binding, Jesus said, right, that we could bind. So how do we bind? See, binding is, um, uh, if, if you want to uh, put it this way, like handcuffing the devil. So what do people do when they find an offender? And They want to restrict the offender for some time. What do the police do? They're afraid that this person might turn violent or uh, do something more destructive for a while till he's proven guilty or till the processes take place. What do they do? They just handcuff them. And they say, okay, just you can't do anything anymore. Uh, you're under our custody now. So that's somewhat what binding is. Uh, so when the enemy is trying to do something in a particular situation and we issue a command and we say, I bind you, your spirit of strife, let's uh, imagine in a marriage, there's a lot of arguments, there's uh, you know misunderstanding. Many things are happening and uh, the people have understood that this is way beyond a normal uh, uh, disagreement that uh, you know generally happens between couples so then what do we do if it has a demonic source then we can exercise our authority and go ahead and bind that spirit of discord bind that spirit of anger bind that spirit of strife you know bind that spirit of confusion whatever it is we go ahead and bind it so what did we do just now it's like handcuffing we bind the operations. You no longer can cause havoc. 
okay so we have bound the devil now now that we have bound the devil it's not a permanent solution why are we saying that because see there are other underlying issues we have stopped the devil from doing what he was doing you know he was he was uh, agitating he was leading people to to fight with one another so we have withheld that but there are other practical steps to take once we have bound the devil so binding is like saying okay we restrain you but what needs to be done maybe in the case the example that i gave it might make sense to resolve issues between the husband and wife uh, so how do we resolve it a good thing would be to uh, you know get wisdom from the word of god maybe if it's possible if it's at the level where they both can talk things through and you know sort matters out then uh, you know base it on scripture then that's good to do uh, that way there's no open door we're not giving the devil any more open doors uh, but if it's beyond that then there's no harm you know seeking uh, counsel from uh, a godly person or wisdom a practical wisdom from a counselor so there's no problem but what are we doing we are setting things in order while the enemy is restrained now once we have bound the devil and we don't think don't set things in order he will still have an opportunity because there'll be open doors okay so that is what when whenever we bind uh, it's generally a good thing for us to also go and fix the underlying uh, issues in a practical way uh, that way the enemy no longer will be able to inter interfere so binding that's how it works so we can bind uh, for for some time but then we also have to do the required thing now coming to loose so along the same lines jesus said whatever you lose on earth will be loosed uh, in heaven but you know we know we've discussed this in prayer and intercession course though it speaks as if uh, what is happening on heaven happens after uh, what happens on earth it's the other way around so apparently it's some legal way of talking in jesus's times and that's why it's written uh, as if the action happens here on earth first and then it happens in heaven but it's uh, the fact that heaven has no bondage and heaven is uh, a, a place of liberty and freedom and no oppression and thereby we are enforcing that here on earth so that's why we are binding that's why we are losing we are going against the devil uh, so we experience the rule and reign of heaven in our lives the way jesus taught us to pray he said um, uh, thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so that's the correct order on earth because it is in heaven so we can also bind and lose so what do we lose we can lose what is on earth what is in heaven what is there in heaven so sometimes we may have heard people pray prayers like uh, i lose the peace of god i lose the joy of god the hope of god so we carry the authority to release what exists in heaven uh, so if we make statements like that there's no harm because it's technically correct uh, whatever is in heaven we want to see that lord we lose your your uh, unity among the people lord be uh, or the way jesus prayed for that woman in luke chapter 13 there was a woman who was bound by satan and she was uh, bent over but jesus went to her and said woman thou art loosed so satan has bound he says uh, this daughter of abraham so uh the binding work which satan did he commanded over that individual be loosed be loosed so that's another way in which we can apply uh loosening uh the works of uh, satan whether it is uh, you know possession bondage captivity uh, setting the captives free proclaiming liberty to the oppressed because that is a part of the mandate that jesus carried upon his life and so if today we can lose a person from bondage that uh, the enemy has uh, over their lives uh, or we can lose the things of the kingdom right the things of the kingdom as i stated the peace of god the the joy of god uh, so just 
proclaim that, declare those things over people's lives. And that's fine. That's valid because we are using our uh, authority and dominion that way. Okay. What else can we do? Advancing against the devil. We can allow, disallow. So there are times, if you remember, when Jesus went to minister deliverance uh, to people and the demons started speaking. And we read in scripture, he did not allow them to speak. So you notice there was authority that Jesus used to grant permission uh, or not grant permission for a certain thing that the demons wanted to do. So we can allow, we can disallow. So even us, when we are ministering deliverance, you know, we may, there may be times when we say, okay, be quiet. I don't allow you to talk or I don't allow you to, to hurt this person. Uh, so demon powers, I am using my authority. I'm using my dominion this way over a specific activity. So we are confronting a specific activity, whether uh, the demon is trying to lie to us, confuse us, intimidate us, or hurt the, the person uh, concerned, we stop it. We say, no, you can't do that. I don't allow you to do that. So I can take my authority in that way also. Uh, the last term is pulling down. Pulling down. We have seen this term in Second Corinthians uh, 4, where we pull down strongholds. You know, we pull down every thought. Uh, we take every thought captive, which does not, uh, it's not aligned to the uh, thinking of God. So as a believer, when I pray and use my dominion, and say something like, uh, I pull down strongholds in the name of Jesus. Now, these strongholds may have to do with uh, our own minds uh, or we are praying over somebody and by the spirit we discern that there are strongholds and we pull them down in the name of Jesus. It's valid. We can pray prayers like that. And also uh, for us collectively, when we are praying as a church, a body or a family over regions, areas, you know, geographical uh, places. Uh, even there, we can pull down strongholds because we will come to it later. Uh, there are, you know, uh, territorial spirits, demonic spirits that create strongholds over regions. So sometimes, as a body. We have to take authority uh, uh, again over the devil and we have to tear down uh, whatever strongholds he has made. Uh, that's where the whole pulling down uh, comes into action. So once we pull it down, what happens? Uh, that level of influence, that level of power, dominance, control that uh, Satan had over a person or over a community or a region, uh, is taken away. So this is how we would apply our authority and our dominion. Now coming to, uh, we've seen the way we take authority in defense and offense. Now prayer and intercession, how does it work? Uh, obviously, we know that it is aligned to uh, taking our position against the devil. So when we read Ephesians chapter 6, in Ephesians chapter 6, we have uh, uh, learned about the armor of God, the weapons, uh, uh, or, or rather the pieces of the armor and uh, the weapons such as the word of God and uh, all that to defend ourselves and also offend the enemy. But as you go straight down, after we read about the sword of the spirit, we come to pray for all the saints, okay, uh, with all kinds of prayers. So it suddenly talks about prayer. There is a connection. There is a connection against, uh, there's a connection to opposing the devil. I want to oppose the devil. So how do I do that? How do I overcome the devil? I will put on the full armor of God, protect myself. And verse 18 is talking about pray for all the saints with all kinds of prayers. So what can we understand? Our protection 
is associated with prayer also okay so that's how i can uh, apply protection on my life defense against the devil and even uh, offensive against the devil when i'm a praying person i can thwart the plans of the devil remember we've talked about prophetic prayer so as the spirit of god shows us reveals to us we can destroy the works of the devil uh, if we recall in uh, luke 22 there jesus uh, when he was talking to peter he said that uh, you know satan wants to sift you as wheat but i have prayed for you peter so knowing what weapon the enemy is going to bring against us what do we do pray and when we pray it destroys in the spiritual realm uh, the work of the devil so you see how authority is actually applicable and uh, uh, dominion uh, can be released through our prayers so prayer and intercession is very very powerful through our prayers we can stop the works of the devil so uh, uh, are we all doing fine any any questions so far Okay, I, I'm looking at the chat here. Uh, so Jackin says, Pastor, how do we help a believer who is anointed but had lived in bondage for several years? He's unable to step out and live victoriously because of his own lack of knowledge of God's word, situations around. Uh, when we pray together, there is a release and he says that he is full of joy, zeal, but then again, things worsen also in his family than before uh, because he's unable to step out and continue in obedience to God. So uh, as we said, uh, Jackin, uh, uh, like people perish for lack of knowledge. Uh, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So uh, over here, praying with the person is a good thing that we can do. Mm, but we have to find ways, practical ways of encouraging them to know the word of God. So uh, we may, if there is opportunity, we may do something like, okay, come, let's uh, let's take some time. I just wanted to take you through uh, some passages of scripture. Equip, basically equip the person. Uh, and uh, it, it can come under the process of discipling the person so i don't know who this is but generally what we say is you know men to men women to women so if it's a lady then i would recommend that you do it but uh, if it's a guy then i would recommend that you you uh, check with him if he's open uh, you connect him to another man uh, a strong person in the lord and maybe they can journey together uh, for that person to share some basics if not all just get them started just get that you know, desire uh, ignited uh, and uh, hopefully you're saying that they were anointed and now uh, there's bondage. So hopefully again, they will come back to that place of freedom. Uh, does does that help, Jackin? Have I missed out anything uh, that I haven't addressed? Okay, great, great. That's good. So uh, prayer also helps. We can pray for them. Uh, but you know how it is that uh, you rather teach someone how to fish than give them some fish because then they are set for life if they know how to, uh, uh, you know, deal with the devil at any given point in time. So equipping them would be a better idea. Pray for them, but equip them. Yes, nice question. Uh, thank you anything else uh, class it's 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 always good to think through whatever we we talked about so All right, so seems like you want more time to think through uh, some of the ways in which we can exercise our authority. So let's do that. And uh, what we'll do is we'll cover the remaining uh, sub topics in chapter 11 in the next class. It's very important because this is going to form the foundation of how we will exercise authority 
uh, for individuals, for uh, regions, and all that is upcoming. You know, the practical steps to that is upcoming. So actually, today's class is one of the most important classes. And uh, I will reiterate it to our uh, on-campus students uh, so that they can listen to our recording today. So all right, let's uh, close with a word of prayer. I just want to request one of us to please go ahead and uh, close off with a word of prayer. Uh, could one of you kindly unmute and pray, please? I think Jacqueline has already started in prayer, so it would be nice to have another person close. Uh, can you hear me? Dina, yes. Thank you, dear Lord, for the class and for what you, uh, what we learned and what was impressed upon our heart and our spirit, Lord. We also, also want to thank you, Lord, for all the weapons and the things that you have put in place, Lord, so that we may effectively, effectively put on the whole armor of God and use uh, these methods, Lord, against the enemy, Lord, whether it is uh, defensive or the other way. And in that way, Lord, that you would uh, thank you for all the authority that you have granted us, Lord, over all the enemy. We pray that each one of us will be able to use uh, these and in this way uh, enforce your authority and your kingdom on this earth. For we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Great weekend. And uh, we shall meet in our next class on Wednesday. Thank you. Bye for now.